What's up? What's happening? In this video, we're going to be talking about how to plan an epic adventure. I've been on quite a few and I'm going to share some of my favourite tips. The key point about route planning is having a point of interest. Now that could be a starting location, it could be a finishing location, or it could just be a midway point that you've seen and that you've wanted to go and ride. We're going to go through some of that and I'm going to share with you what I've learned over the years. We're going to be using Commute, which is a tool that I've been using to plan all my routes, as you might have seen in Scottish Scotland Showcase. I'm going to go on to Commute and I'm going to hit Route Planner. From there, we're going to use Scottish Scotland Showcase Episode 5, where we rode from Malig to Shield Bridge. I'm going to talk you through step by step how I planned out that route. So we're on Route Planner, search for place. Our starting point is Malig, so I'll type that in. Malig village in Scotland. We're gonna start here. Now, what brought me to Malig was the fact that I used to go there on holiday and I wanted to discover a little bit more about the mountains beyond and really see what was there. A lot of it is inaccessible by vehicle, so you've got to take a boat there or use a bike to get there. In this instance, we actually did both. I wanted to go from Malig, ride around the coast, and their first point of interest is Tarbot. Only accessible by boat, bike or hike, that is a highlight that has been given. Okay, so I can see there, the first part of the ride is 19 kilometers or 270 meters of climbing. I can actually have a look and see what some of the sections are like. From Tarba, we'd have to organize a boat. We had that chartered and that would drop us at the other end of Loch Nevis. There's no waypoint to follow here, so we're gonna turn off follow ways and plot that manually. Clicking follow ways back on, our next point of interest is Sourley's Bothy. So we're gonna include that on route. You can see it automatically plots the easiest route to get there. And that is our day one ride done. So for day two, we're gonna carry on from Sourley's Bothy. We're gonna ride over to Inverie where there is a fantastic pub, the Old Forge, that's already a highlight. So we're gonna click on that and we're gonna see what route options it gives. Okay, so you can see that it's given me a route and that is the exact route that we took, up through the mountains, some quite hard going switchbacks and then some flowing single track all the way down to Inverie. So on this bottom cursor, you can actually see that it's plotted the route for me and it's also given me an elevation profile of the ride can tell that it's gonna be pretty steep to get up to the top. It's showing an incline of 20 to 26%. So that means it's gonna be hike a bike. And then on the other side, similarly, 20 to 22%. That's gonna be a nice descent. It's all single track and an S1 grading. So we should have a pretty good path. And then it takes us all the way into Inverie where we actually join a path section before joining Tarmac again. Okay, so at this point, we have got to Inverie. Our final destination is Shield Bridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just find Shield Bridge on the map. I'm gonna hit Shield Bridge as our finishing point. Set as new endpoint. It's plotted me a route and we're gonna take a look at the elevation profile. Again, I know I've got a steep up and over and it's also given me a nice trail view. So Man Barrasdale looks like a summit, nice views, path looks in good condition. It's really useful having these actual pictures when you're planning the route to see what the conditions could be like. Looks like it's gonna be a great descent. I know it's a great descent because I've already done it. Really, really fun all the way down to Barrasdale. And then it takes us along the edge of Loch Erne. There's another highlight here. So we've got Bobby Dazzling Glen Barrasdale Bay. And the photo that we've got there to show us what the trail's like just looks absolutely fantastic. Okay, so if we look further along the route, there's another highlight which is Kinlochhorn, and that is a little village that you get to. And there's also a sign that you can get a cup of tea at Kinlochhorn Farm. I can then have a look, so it's given me a pre-plotted option. You can have a look around, zoom in and out, see what other options there might be. There's options where you could go across through the mountains, but I think we're gonna stick with the way that it's marked out for us. So from Kinlochhorn, there's a couple of highlights along the way. It says hike a bike segment out of Kinlochhorn. Someone has added in a comment, don't let the maps deceive you. This section is so steep that it would be hard to ride it unless you're on an e-bike. 
But one real nice thing about Camus is it's community-based. People can add in comments, they can add in pictures, and it really helps with route planning, just knowing that people have done it ahead of you and what the conditions might be. Again, another highlight saying wild and rocky descent. Great windy descent down into the valley before the river crossing. Again, another comment saying a big steep hike out of the glen with bikes. Glad to hit the top before sunset. In our case, we made it to just before sunset. It was absolutely stunning, but it was hard going. So the highlights are in red. And one of the latest features on the platform is trail view. Trail view just gives you a snapshot of what the terrain is like, what the trail is like, if it's single track or if it's double track. And we've got a really nice shot here added by Patrick. You can see it's flowing single track along the edge of the river and it just looks absolutely beautiful. There's one final highlight on the route and that is a bothy. Someone has said is without a doubt a beautiful bothy, easy-ish, accessible. Inside the bothy there are multiple rooms and stoves. The basic bothy stuff, wood to burn, can be found within a 20 minute walk. So handy if you're thinking about doing a bike packing mission. And from there, it's plain sailing all the way down into Shield Bridge. If you just want to move your route at all, you can actually drag and drop it to different sections. This is gonna give you a different idea of what it could look like. It also automatically updates the elevation profile so you can see what the changes might do to actually your ride. On the left hand side, if you scroll down, it's going to give you an estimation of the time it's gonna take you for this ride. From experience, I would say that this is a best case scenario. You spend so much time on rides like these, getting off your bike, pushing, going through terrain that is unexpected, dealing with other things. So make sure that you give yourself plenty of time. Although it's saying eight hours 25, we split this over three days and there were three pretty big days of riding. It is 100 kilometers, primarily off-road, and you've got 2,600 meters of ascent and descent to deal with. If you scroll down further again, it's gonna give you a breakdown of your weigh types and your surfaces. If you've got a premium account, then you can go and add in what the weather is going to be like. So if we pick tomorrow, starting at nine, so it's giving us a forecast of a low and a high of eight degrees and 10 degrees, chance of rain 17% with a little bit of wind. Pretty perfect day to take on this ride, I'd say. Kamut Premium members will also have access to live weather updates. They'll have live tracking so friends and family can see their ETA, where they are on the ride, and even how much phone battery they have left. You can get sport-specific maps. In our case, you can turn on and off to see what trails are in the area. And you also have 3D maps, which are useful just to see what the profile and the terrain might look like. Once you've planned your route, make sure that you save it and you can download it to your GPS device. You can even share it with a friend so that they know where you are at all times. Before you go, make sure that your bike is checked over, it's all in good working order and that you have the right equipment to be completely self-sufficient. Once you're out on the trail, something that I really liked doing was just looking on your phone, seeing where you are, seeing what was ahead of you, how far you had to go, and also how far you'd come because I found it quite motivational to keep on going, keep moving, and thinking there's an endpoint where you can get beer, you can get coffee, you can get warm again because some of the days that we did were absolutely epic. The very last thing before you head out, make sure that you've saved that map, stored it for offline use, and that you've got a second copy. Be that a paper copy, be on your phone or a GPS device. Tell someone where you're going and give them an estimated time of arrival. If you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, then why not check out the Scotty Scotland Showcase playlist because we went on some epic adventures. If this has helped you with route planning, give it a thumb up like. If you've got any questions about route planning, leave them down below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the trails.